coming off the bye, you gotta do all yeah. the maintenance. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Right. Had a good week last week. Uh, had open week and um, did some recruiting and uh, practiced a couple of days and tried to give some guys some rest. Um, been lucky to actually practice last night. Just going back from the week before, Darian Ford practiced last night. David Griffin, uh, Griffin and Josh Peterson are still very limited, so we'll see for them. I think the other good thing was last night, just guys in general, you know, that I guess were their time was. Limited, uh, Xavier Brown really hasn't played the last three weeks because he went out early in the uh, South Owl game and missed Idaho and pretty much missed last week. He looked a lot better. D. Gillespie looked a lot better. I know Tyler Johnson's been in and out. He looked better last night. Uh, Roy Williams had limited snaps in the app game. He looked a lot better last night, uh, as did Frank Sutton, who I guess the last three or four games we played, his snaps have kind of reduced with that turf toe, but he looked a lot better last night. So all in all, I think a good week, and um, moving forward to Auburn, a really good football team. Obviously, um, eight and two on the year. You know, two close losses at Clemson, fourteen six, and then at LSU. You know, game they were had in hand. Give LSU credit for coming back, and um, and then really some signature wins this year, forty nine to ten against Mississippi State, and then most of us saw the uh, Georgia game the other night. So um, I think uh, when you break them down. Look at them. Uh, start with their offense. I'm impressed with their balance, and what they what they're doing this year. Um, you know, 237 rushing, two, uh, 230 passing. That was before the Georgia game. So obviously, really good balance. 67% uh, per, uh, completion percentage. They're up this year from last year. What you're going to see from them is a lot of formations, uh, motion shifts, unbalanced lines, um, what I call uh, sugar huddles. You know, back from the old Cincinnati Bengal deal where they line up about two or three yards and then they all run out and stuff. And uh, and really, the word our defensive coaches use is eye candy. Just a lot of things going on or whatever to basically do what they want to do. And that's run the ball with power and throw it over the top. But that's what they're trying to do. And uh, everything is just window dressing, but they do a great job of doing that. I mean, it all centers on their power run game. And they're going to take Oh, at least five, maybe 10 to 12 shots each game, which I love. I mean, they're going to throw it over the top with all that stuff and everything. And uh, I call them shots. I mean, they're going to be, you know, 30, 40, 50 yard shots down the field, which they do off their run stuff. Quarterback, I think, is, has really helped them this year. They're last year and this year, they're a little bit different, uh, the same stuff, but just uh, some, some things, I guess, are, you know, not as much of the quarterback run is. You know, we actually have a lot of experience with them. Uh, I don't know, I had two or three years worth at McNeese that we studied them when they had Cam Newton and Nick Marshall and stuff because we had a light quarterback at McNeese and Daniel Sams. So they were, they're one of the teams each year that I got a lot of video on and watched and studied in the off season. So I've watched them through the years. Like I said, now they're not as much quarterback run heavy as they are, but they seem to be taking more shots down the field than what they did, especially when they had Nick Marshall for two or three years and stuff. But, um, you know, Kerryon Johnson is obviously a great football player, the running back. But I'll say, you know, to me, when you watch Auburn, to me it starts with their O-line and their D-line. They're fabulous. They are really good at what they do. They have four seniors on the offensive line. And um, when you watch them, you know, like the other night, I kept hearing and listen to the commentators and, you know, they have the best defensive front in the country, yada, yada, yada. And there's no doubt they probably do. But I don't know. I don't think their offensive line gets enough credit. I didn't last year either. Those guys are really good. And, um, you know, and they make it tough for you in terms of what they do. Defensively, you know, I alluded to the, to the front four. And I think that's kind of the basis of what they do. And why they're allowed to do what they do is because of those guys up front. They're allowed to to you know, play with four guys. They're allowed to pressure with four guys when they want to and cover with seven. And they can get a lot of pressure on you, no doubt. Um, you know, their safety guys, 14 and 28, I think, are excellent players. Obviously, six is going to be a top draft pick, the, uh, the boundary corner, the big kid, or whatever. But I've really been impressed with 14 and 28. So, so anyway, they kind of got you in a little bit of dilemma there. You know, if you spread them out, then you basically have to beat their guys one-on-one. -on -one. If you bring them in, 
then their safeties are excellent tacklers, 14 and 28. I mean, they tackle like linebackers. There was two situations the other night where they came in and Georgia did, and they cracked, you know, the receiver came in and took 14 or took 28, and then six come down, and, you know, he made the tackle on good backs for two or three yards and stuff. So, you know, he's a little bit different, you know, at corner, obviously, you know, being a bigger kid that can tackle. And then, uh, you know, you top that off, and, you know, you got one of the best kickers in the country in Carlson. Seems like he's been around forever, and he's still there. And uh, so he's pretty good. You get across the 50 there and score, and, you know, they seem like they'd be in because I was watching the other night, and I think, what did they say? He set an NCAA record for most kicks ever, over 50 yards in a career stuff. So, so anyway, we know it's a tough challenge, obviously. Uh, you know, we played 11 a.m. on there, but uh, – Treat it like I've treated all these games. It's an opportunity game for us. It's an opportunity game for our kids. You know, I mean, I don't never met really any kid that's, you know, that's any competitor or any coach that, you know, you don't want to go play on the biggest stage you can. So this is an opportunity. And that's the way I look at it. It's an opportunity for our kids. It's an opportunity for our program to go over and play. But without a doubt, it's a huge, huge challenge. And like I said a lot of it too stems from you know, really trying to match them on the line. And, uh, you know, I'm certainly not sliding uh, the running back. He's a great player. I'm not sliding anybody on their football team. But it's hard for me, you know, if somebody that loves the game like I do, like last week watching and then yesterday and then even this morning watching how impressed I am with their offensive and defensive line. They're fabulous at what they do. So to me, that's going to be the biggest challenge is, you know, trying to do some things to, uh, you know, to try to – you know, get them in second and ten some kind of way, second and eight, second and nine, you know, third and six. I mean, you got to try to do that. Then defensively, the reason they're so good and the reason they were so good against Georgia the other night, Georgia's in second and 12, second and 13, second and 11, third and eight, third and nine. I took seven series and, you know, Georgia started out good. And then you take seven series in the middle of the game there where Auburn pulled away and everything is second and 10, second and 12, second and 14. Third and 13, third and 12, third and nine, it's over. You know, if they can just get you in those situations, because like I said, I mean, they just, they blitz when they want to. They, they can cover people and bring those front four guys. And, um, you know, and then the challenge is, what do you do? We tried to do some of that last year, and then we brought a tight end in and helped, and we left the running back in and helped, and they just double your wideouts. Oh, you know, okay. You know, so you kind of got to pick your poison. And, um, and anyway, but, uh, so we'll have to obviously have a good game plan, try to put our kids in position the best we can to make plays, and that's what we plan on doing. So any questions? As a coach slash fan, are you torn watching a game like that? As a fan, you're like, wow, this is pretty impressive. But then as a coach, you're like, oh, we got, th we got these guys this week. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I just I love the game. And, uh, you know, regardless of who you're playing and not playing, I enjoy, you know, watching good football. And, and they got a good football team and stuff, what they do. But, um, you know, it's a uh, – you see teams like that, you know, like like they are now in Alabama and you know LSU somewhat. I guess I haven't watched much of LSU and, and since we played them, but you know, which often goes overlooked at how good you are on the offensive defensive line. You know, I mean everybody else and uh, you know, before all those years, uh, you know, we had all the Bama stuff every year and yeah, I mean no, no doubt. I mean they got Heisman Trophy winners and this and that, but man, how good they are on the offensive and defensive lines, impressive. And this team is built like that. When you look at them, and I said, it's to me, it, yeah, obviously they're good quarterback, running back. I'll give them all the credit, all the kudos. I mean, because they're great players. But well, when you can start up front and be that physical on both the O line and the D line, it certainly uh, it helps matters everywhere else. Coach, you've been in a situation where your your next opponent beat the number one team in the country, and if not, you know how different is it, or what's that feeling like? Is it? You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I'm sitting there trying to think if we have or we haven't. I, I don't remember. We played some good teams uh, through the years. And, um, you know, somebody was, uh, my wife was showing me, showing me something on social media the other night when Miami was playing. But we played Miami back in McNeese, back when, I mean, Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne, Shockey, I mean, the whole deal. I remember, you know, we got a little frustrated at the end of the game because, uh, they put in their four string running back and he was hard to tackle was Clinton Portis, you know, and then a couple of years later, you know, you kinda dang that guy's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, you know, he is pretty good. But uh, 
you know, and stuff. So, I mean, we've played good teams before, you know, and, and uh, so I don't know if they were coming off the, you know, beating a national champion or whatever. But, you know, what they do and how they do is their business. I mean, I don't, you know, obviously, you know, I was asked about it or whatever because they play Georgia and then they play Alabama the next week. So, I don't know, you know. I don't know how they handle that and how they don't handle that. And it's really, you know, I can't control any of that. So, so we just got to get our guys – you know, my job is, and our job is as staff, is, you know, how can we get our guys to play the best they can play? You know, how can we put them out there where they feel confident enough to go out and play the best we can play? And you know what? And that's what I'm going to tell them. So I told them last night, if it's not good enough, we'll get on the bus and come home. You know, but I think the end, the end game for us is, is, you know, we're writing, you know, we're still in the conference deal and we still got games. And uh, my goal is, is to, you know, is to uh, obviously have a chance to win the game. I mean, that's what we want to do. But at the end of the day, my ultimate goal is, is let's become a better football team after this game. You know, let's let's take things and let's be let's be a better football team, and that's what we're going to try to do. The first few five matchups of the year. Is there any is there any difference in playing these guys in November as opposed to September? When you usually see them. Yeah, I've never done it. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a it's a first for me, and uh, it's just something that uh, you know I remember. You know, playing people like in the middle of the year. You know, we played LSU one time, you know, right after they beat Florida in the swamp, and then they play, they were playing Auburn the next week with Cam Newton. I remember that, but I mean that wasn't like at the very wasn't in November and stuff. So it's a little different, but uh, you know, no, I got you know, I don't know, I don't know really the wording for that. It's just a little different. It's not that it's you know anything that you can't do or whatever. It's just a little different. Could it be damaging? Facing a P5 like Auburn late in November when you guys are trying to, I guess, get your confidence together, you know, for a bull run yourself? I don't think so. I mean, uh, you know, it's just, you know, whether you play them early in the year or the, you know, at the, or at the end of the year, I mean, you know, if you play somebody early in the year, I guess what you're alluding to, and, you know, you can lose confidence early in the year, you know, if that's the case, you know, sometimes may hurt you even later in the year in terms of from a confidence standpoint. But uh, I never really looked at it that way. And, I've always said, I mean, and coaches get mad at me. They think I'm going to jinx us or whatever. But I've never really experienced that we've lost any more kids due to injury and playing, you know, these team or that team or, you know, I remember we played a Division II team one time at McNeese and was up 40-something to nothing at the half and lost three or four players for the year. I mean, it just, you know, I think injuries happen. And, uh, you know, it's our job to to go out and play and uh, and make sure we put them in positions where, you know, they're confident enough to, to feel like they make plays. But I don't necessarily think I, – I understand, I think it's a good question, but I don't think it's necessarily – I'd be more worried about losing confidence early in the year than I am at this time of the year. Speaking of injuries, defense, did the week off help you guys get a little bit more healthier on that side of the ball? Um, you know, like I alluded to uh, Aaron earlier, I think that, uh, you know, we have a couple kids like Tyler Johnson, Roy Williams, uh, Chase Day actually played limited snaps in the last game. Um, that I hope feel better. I don't know really where David Griffith is, but you know we still have the the same ten or eleven are out for the year. So I mean that's not that's not going to change. But I was more concerned really with some of those guys there in that stretch we had. Whatever you know, you just get a little beat up, and you know, and the kids are competitors and they stay like a kid like Frank Sutton. I mean I gotta give him credit. I mean he stayed in there in his battle, but we've reduced his snaps in some of the games like the Idaho game. I think he only played about half the snaps he does, but. You know, when you have things like like Frank had turf toe, well, I mean, you know, it's just it's not going away. And you you play every week and you get, you know, and it's it's just sometimes it doesn't get any better or it gets a little worse. And so every now and then I think it's good to press the reset button. And we basically gave him the week off. I mean, he came out and, uh, you know, it's it, it was good. Like last week, uh, I am you know, the guy that's to me has done a phenomenal job this year is Roland Jenkins, you know, because we've had to move him. You know, he was, I think, winning the Memphis game as a third or fourth team weak safety. And he's been the starting free safety for the last six, seven, eight weeks. If you look at it, he's playing somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 or 60 snaps a game. We're playing Austin Holly some and playing, keep playing Austin Holly. So what we were able to do last week is Austin took all the snaps of the ones and Roland watched. You know, so number one, you know, give Roland a little, little opportunity to, to rest up, whatever. Number two, give Austin all the first team reps. And stuff. So I think it's a win-win in that type of situation. That's just an example. But we did that at multiple positions, you know, of guys that, uh, you know, they did they did individual, they did stuff like that. But when we got to the group and the team reps, we pretty much let them watch 
And uh, like Frank Sutton and guys like that, we let them watch. But that enables you to get other guys in there, and they get better snaps. You know, so hopefully that makes you better in the long run. We haven't had a chance to chat since uh, we announced that the Florida State game was uh, back on. What are your uh, thoughts on the weekend? Um, it's you know, it's it's something that uh, that I anticipated, you know, happening. It's something that uh, that we needed to happen, and uh, so you know, it's something that we were just kind of really waiting on them you know, to whatever, but it's something that Mr. Floyd's kept me in the loop on and we've kind of understood and, uh, but we were just kind of waiting, you know, to get the confirmation from them. So I, I've, I've anticipated this. I mean, I've made recruiting schedules a month or two ago, you know, where we had to do whatever and I've planned on, you know, because that particular week recruiting becomes live. That's a contact period. So you're either recruiting, you're either playing an extra week, and then you know it basically takes a week a week away from recruiting. So I mean I've already, but I guess what I'm saying is that I'm already playing for that. You know when I made the schedule, I made the schedule saying we were going to be playing that week. You know. Coach, when you see the numbers that Auburn's put up defensively, I think it's had its effect the preparation for the uh, run pass option. Do you see what's happening? We're going to do what we do, and um, you know it's in terms of uh, preparation and stuff. Uh, the thing about them, and, uh, and I think that's what makes them good. It's, it's not a mystery, really, what they're doing. It's who they're doing it with and how they're doing it and stuff. So, But we're going to go in uh, doing what we do, and uh, you know, you're going to basically see us do what we've been doing offensively. And uh, I think we've gotten better as an offense. I think we're leading the, the Sun Belt now. Total offense, scoring, we can run it and throw it. So you know, we're going to go in, and uh, you know, who knows? I mean, maybe they. You know they're too good and they can match us up, but I think the only the only the best chance you have is when you go in and do what you do, and uh, so that's what we plan on doing. I, number one, I, I think we've talked about that before. Number one, it gives you the best chance. Number two, I think if you do what you do, then you then you're going to get better. You know you can go back and correct those mistakes. And one thing I've never done in these games is go in there and think we're going to crack the code. You know it's just I don't think it helps you in the long run. That's what I call it anyway, cracking the code. You know, just changing your whole offense or your defense. I, I'm not in all that. All right, I guess that kind of speaks to your point then about making sure you know, that you come out of this a better football team before anything else. No question. And plus, you know, not just that. I think it gives you the best chance. I always have. And, uh, you know, some of these games we haven't done so hot. I'm talking about it in my career, however many years. Some of them we have. But what I always tell the players, I told them last night, told them again, we're going to do what we do. You know, we're going to do what we do. Uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be trick play city. It's not going to be, you know, you know, just onside kicking uh, all that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do what we do. We're going to treat them like we treat everybody else. Uh, we're going to practice. If you go out there and watch us practice, we got the same exact amount of periods that we had when we played App State or we played anybody else. This is what we do. This is how we think we can be at our best. And that's the way I've approached them. And, uh, you know, approached every game and, you know, that way. And, uh, you know, I just I, I think that gives you the best opportunity. Plus, I think it, it allows, like you said, to get better. But you know, anytime you do something, and you know, it's all about confidence and the kids out there and feeling and seeing things the way they should see it. And if you do what you do, and and uh, you know, we'll have a couple wrinkles here or there, but we do every week. But the basis of what we do is is, is going to be the same and stuff. And uh, I think it gives you the best opportunity. Coach, I got one recruiting question. I mean, it's going to be different this year with the early signing period. Literally, it's like. Mm -hmm. Do you expect the majority of your class to be signed in that early signing, or how will that? That's happen? TBA, you know. That's that's a uh, you know something. I mean, you know, we're trying in that direction, but that's that's another element I think of of the new recruiting model that um, you know that's also comes into play. You know, you're committed. You're you know with this and that, but what are you committed to? And so I think that's uh, you know, and it's also too which. I don't mind saying, but it becomes a, you know, like a, um, I don't know, some of a trickle down effect, I guess. You have some of your power five schools telling them, you know, don't sign right now, wait and see what we do. And then, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it becomes a, you know, where you're kind of getting some of this stuff, but, um, you know, we hope to, but like I'm sure everybody else does, but that's also, uh, you know, that's kind of a ever evolving you know, situation and stuff too. You know that uh, it used to be just be who was committed, who wasn't committed. Now, who's committed? But when? Are, when are they committed to? You know, stuff. So that's been a uh, interesting. Uh, but that's something that we anticipated. I remember Todd Dooley and I having that conversation last year, whenever they you know did this, and I remember telling Todd, well, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, 
you know, when, when are, now or when are you going to sign? You know, are you going to wait and how you do it? And the other thing, too, that's, um, that you have to play into this, too, Aaron, that um, – I'm doing all right. I'm not – okay. That, uh, no, we're just talking, but I'm saying that you have to play into this that I think goes overlooked is the fact that some of the kids you're recruiting, I mean, they're going to be playing all the way into that. And, you know, some of these uh, kids, you know, that, you know, it's like these, some of the, a lot of these Texas schools too. I mean, so when do you official visit? You know, when do you – so it, it's, it's interesting. Like I said, we may – there may be some kids that maybe anticipated signing December 20th that – are going to end up pushing it back because, you know, maybe they want to go visit a couple schools. So there, there was a lot more to it, I think. But that's something that, like I said, Todd and I and as a staff we talked about that we knew that was coming. But, you know, rather than just, you know, I said just looking at it, oh, well, whatever. You just sign it in December and not in February. But, I mean, there's a whole – there's some other things that, uh, that were involved in that that we kind of anticipated that I kind of figured would be – would weigh into that. Thanks.